Welcome everyone to the session Smart Locator Strategy for React Applications by Sudarshan Selvaraj. So we are glad Sudarshan can join us today. Hey, uh, thanks a lot Vindrish, for the quick introduction. So and I welcome everyone for the session and uh, I hope all are doing well and good. So uh, in this session, like uh, we will be uh, covering uh, like few important things that everyone should know before automating JS applications, right? And I will also try to uh, keep things very simple. So rather than uh, providing with a lot of uh, information. So we will just like uh, uh, go through the very uh, basic uh, informations that are, that are required for automating uh, React applications. And uh, before going to the session, like uh, just a word about myself. So I am Sudarshan Salvaraj and I'm working as a lead SDET in um, Gojek. And I have around uh, eight years of experience in uh, QB space and I have worked extensively on uh, UI automation tools like Selenium, APM, and a couple of others. And you can follow me on LinkedIn and GitHub. I like often uh, post all things related to testing and uh, I also develop a lot of other tools that enables all uh, QAs and SDs to make their life easy, right? So do uh, check this out. So keeping things aside, like let's just uh, start with the session. So first, like uh, I just want to make clear like uh, what all the things that we will be covering as part of the session. So the first thing is like, so I always uh, encourage uh, and I have been doing this myself for the entire career is uh, whenever I'm going to start with uh, testing or automating any application. The first things I will do is like, so I will try to understand the uh, application under the test better, what tech stack that has been used, what type of framework that is being used. So what are all the challenges that we may face if we start automating the applications. So understanding of the application will uh, and give a, a better visibility on uh, things that needs to be taken care of before and we start testing it. And also we could also get additional information like what are the other tools and technologies that can be implemented to make our life easier, right? So on that friends, uh, since this is going to be a React application, so we want to understand a very basic things like what a React component is, how the React component works. And so that will give a better understanding of how that can be tested as part of our automation, right? So that will be the first thing we will be covering. So next thing is like, so what are all the challenges that we might face in automating such components? So in, in terms of automation, like uh, what are all the real-time challenges and uh, how we can overcome it? So the last part is like, how we gonna use the React web driver and uh, leveraging all its capabilities to overcome the issues that we, we are facing. Cool, so being said that, what is a React component, right? So in recent days, like most of the single page applications are being created using uh, frameworks like uh, React, Angular, and uh, Vue, right? So all these uh, uh, things looks very crazy and uh, sounds very uh, uh, hard to understand, right? Hey, what is React, what it is doing? But if you break things into a smaller chunks, then it will give a very meaning and sense like, hey, this is what the application is doing. So in case of uh, React, everything is a component at the end of the day. When, when I say a component, so it is just a piece of code or a function or a class that resembles a UI element. So for example, uh, let's take uh, uh, Amazon. So when you search for uh, any product, you will get list of uh, uh, search items, right? So under the search items, each item is internally a component. So it has uh, some functionality associated to it. It has some HTML attached to it. So that is a basic of a component, right? So with each individual component, you will just add it up and build it as a whole uh, uh, application. So it's a sort of a chunk of uh, data, which is collectively used to build a page or an application. So that is what a React component is. And as I said, a single component can hold several other components inside. So same like how HTML is rendered, right? So you have a parent component and each parent component has any number of child components to it. So similarly in React, you have a component and the component can reuse any existing components inside it. And the key things which we need to get is like, so each component consists of two information. One, inf the first information is called as a prop and the next one is called as state. So this sounds crazy, but a prop is nothing but, so in Java world or JavaScript, consider a function as a component and a function can accept a parameter, right? So those parameters are nothing but the properties. 
So when you render a component in a web page, you can give some properties to it. So for example, uh, uh, in YouTube, uh, there are like a video thumbnails that are being rendered, right? So that is a component and that component expects few properties like what is the thumbnail URL, what should be the video description, and what are all the other properties for that video, like how many likes, how many dislikes, all those are the properties for the particular thumbnail component. And the next one is called as a state. State is nothing but a private variable for the component itself. So each component has to maintain some state, right? So for example, in uh, YouTube, uh, if you hover on a video type, it will automatically start playing it. There are like other action items like uh, you can delete it or you can hover it to show some information. So all those things are called as state, which is be uh, applicable only for that particular component instance. So these are all the three main things that we will be covering today. So let's take an example of a simple uh, React component here. So as you see on the left side, like uh, we have a, a counter application where on clicking the plus icon, the counter value gets incremented and on clicking the minus, the value is getting decremented. Very simple as that. And if you look at the component code here, so we just have a function with some name, which accepts some parameters and it returns a HTML element. So this entirely is called as a component and the name of the function is the component name itself. So for this component, the name is counter and what is the property? It accepts the property called maximum value and it is going to be a number and it is an optional value. So if you provide a maximum value, the counter will stop at this maximum. If not, it will go endlessly. And we have state here. The state is the internal property of the counter, which it maintains. So whenever we increment it, we will increment the state variable. So this is nothing but a local variable to this counter. No, this variable cannot be accessed outside of this component. This is only specific to this particular component. Okay. And if we take a look at the HTML here, so we just have icon here. Again, this icon is another component. So as I said, a single component can compose with several other components here. So we have icon component and we are passing a property to it. So this icon component has a property called name and we are passing what is the name of this icon. And on click is going to be another property. We are passing a callback reference here. So whenever we click on this, this method gets executed and we are updating the state here. So same goes with the decrement icon. We have icon component and we have provided a property to it and on clicking, we will just decrement it. And we have a simple uh, heading, heading element, which will just display the counter. So what React does is, whenever this component is uh, uh, rendered in the UI, it will render this particular HTML over there. And whenever there is a change in the state variable, it will just re-renders this particular element. So rather than re-rendering the entire DOM, it will just re-renders the uh, element which associated to a state to it. So this is altogether called as a React component. So now we have we know what a component is. Now let's see when we mount this component to the HTML and we open the web page. Let's see how the DOM looks like. So for the same uh, application, so if we uh, open it in the browser, we check the DOM. So we don't have any information of the component here, right? It's just a bunch of uh, HTML elements with some random class names, some properties assigned to it. If you take a look at it, so I'm just like highlighting the, uh, the plus icon. If you check at the DOM, there is no meaningful information that we could get whether this icon is plus or minus, right? Because the same properties are there for the uh, minus icon as well. So this is a very simple application. So you could just simply go ahead with, okay, I will just use XPath and find the first SVG. So that is going to be the plus icon. We could go ahead. But what in the future, if the, if the product uh, requirement is going to be swap the icons, I want the minus icon first and the plus icon next. What happens? Our automation test eventually will break and we need to come again and we need to fix this. But still it is okay, just two icons, you could fix it. But think of a very complex application where you have a simple component can have like a 10 icons, 10 different icons for a, a, a denoting different things, right? How are we going to automate those things? So that is going to become a problematic things, right? So that is where like we will be like using the React WebDriver and see how effectively we could uh, find these elements. Okay, 
So this is a general HTML DOM. But in ReactJS, the library internally uses a concept called virtual DOM. Okay. So what a virtual DOM is, it is nothing but an in-memory representation of the HTML DOM itself. So this is nothing but XML document where we have a tag and internally it has all the subchilds, everything. So React, what it does is it will just maintain these hierarchy in form of an object. So it knows an object with a key called, okay, I have an element with a tag named div and that div as an internal an array of children. And if you go inside the cheat children, it might have internally like a, a number of children and with all the properties, it will maintain an object. So what React gives the capability is we could able to go and inspect that object. So for that, there is an extension called the React Dev Tools. You could just install in the Chrome and we could like visualize the same DOM in virtual DOM way. Okay, so in my browser, I just installed the uh, Dev Tools, React Dev Tools, and I just activated it. So now if I inspect the same application, I can get the information about the component itself. So see, I have the parent uh, counter component and I can see what property it has. So I have provided a maximum value of 100. And there you can see, I can have a, a, a component called icon. So that component internally has a component called MD add. So this is nothing but the name of the icon itself. So if you go below, we have another component called icon that internally has icon called FA minus. Now we will go and inspect how that icon component looks like. So now I'm just highlighting the plus icon. So there is this icon component and in the property section, you could see there is a name attached to it. So if you remember in the previous slide, so we have an icon here, we have provided a name to it. So this is a property, right? So the same property is reflected here as well. So now what the, the way uh, we think is, can we make use of these informations to find this element? So rather than relying on the pure uh, uh, normal XPath and CSS way, can we somehow make use of this information and we try to find the elements from the UI, right? So that's the uh, key idea behind the uh, React uh, web driver is. So now let's see what this React web driver does and what it is. So it is not a, a, a alternative to a Chrome driver or Firefox driver, rather than it is going to be a simple utility library that is that can be used along with our existing drivers and make life easy by with the capabilities it's going to provide right and uh, it is uh, currently only available for java but we are also working on releasing it for uh, other uh, selenium writings as well so just like uh, look for the github repo to get updated with the latest releases and all and the final things like it is uh, completely open source and uh, it is free for use to in any project or any companies. So that's the um, main thing she wanted to share. So now we saw what it is to how to use it. So it's very straightforward. So uh, this is the repository. So it has complete documentation which you can refer to. And uh, this can be easily plugged into any of the existing uh, automation uh, frameworks. So in, in case if you're going to use Maven, just add this as a dependency. And in case of Gradle, just add it to your uh, build.gradle file and this will uh, import the uh, library for you. So I have already uh, set up a sample uh, test automation project with the uh, library already added. And I have done some very basic setup, right? So you're opening a Chrome driver and uh, creating some instances. So and I also have the a sample uh, via JS based application. So which just send us some uh, uh, user information like uh, name, email, their gender. So if he's going to be admin user, yeah, small batch will be shown. And what country this user is from. A very, very simple and straightforward React yeah, application. Now let's inspect and see how this application looks like. So now if someone wants you to automate this, so first thing we will do is like, we will go and inspect the UA stack, right? Okay, so we have a card element here. So this is going to be the card element. So let's see how the user name looks like. Okay, so user name has some meaningful uh, value in its class name. We could use some XPath to find, okay, uh, a class that contains username and we could find the username. This is fine. Let's see how we can go with the email ID. 
so this is just a div and there is another div there is no meaningful class name attached to it no id but it has a event to it okay so how about these icons so again it is a div it has a bunch of divs to it a simple svg no any additional information same for other also no information and it's saying here but it's just a span but even though if it's going to be a span like we don't know what icon it is right so for india also the icon is going to be the same the properties are remains the same and for us also is going to be a span the same role same class name same styles so how are we going to differentiate it right so to find these elements so react web driver provides a new locator type called by react component so we already know that selenium has its own inbuilt like locators like a id class name css right so using this react web driver it exposes a new uh, locator called by react component where you can find a component by its name so this is just a plain name right so in our example we used a component called counter you will just pass in the component name and if you use it with find element it will return the first counter and if you use it with find elements it will return all the elements that has a counter to it if not if you want to further filter out this counter okay we could do it how i need to find a component with counter that has a props called maximum value and it has a value as 100 so let's say i have 10 counter values uh, that has been rendered on the same page but i am only interested with the counter whose maximum value is 100 same applicable for state i want to find a counter but the count should be 10 on it i am only interested on the counter with the value 10 assigned to it or or else you could mix all these things into a single locator i want a counter that has a maximum value of 100 and its count should be 10 so using this like you could find any real components on a web page you know so just with a single thing and also it is relatively fast because this rather than finding the element in the original dom it is it will go get the virtual dom object from the react parses it and from the virtual dom it will identify the respective dom from the node itself so let's now uh, see these things in uh, a quick action so as i said like i have this uh, demo project already uh, set up and uh, you don't have to do any initialization so it will just open the application now what we could do is let's try and find how many user cards how many users are displayed in the page so to do that we need to find what is the component name of the card itself so now let's go through this and let's inspect the card and if we come to the components so it has this so we have a component called user card here so if you check at the user card it holds a property called user and it has some additional information okay whether he is admin or not what's the country email id gender so all this information are here so let's use this component name and let's try to find out how many user cards are there okay so let's do all users Just to find elements, and instead of using the uh, default uh, locators, we will just go with by React dot component, and we will just say component name, and we will just start uh, print it out. okay so there should be 10 users okay this is good now let's what we want to do is let's try to grab the email id of each uh, users okay how we could do is again like let's go here and inspect so let's inspect this this element let's go to this components tab 
So we could see there is a component called email. So let's make use of it. So list of, uh, again, the web element, email. So dot is component of email. Now let's do, uh, Let's print it out all the uh, text of the email elements. Okay, so we just got all the email elements. Okay, this is good. So we could get all the email IDs and uh, all the users, right? But the use cases, I want to get the email ID of the first user. So I, I need to validate it in that way. That is also possible. So we could chain the uh, locators as well. So let's take all users and I'm only interested in getting the email of the first user. So let's pick the first user. Again, let's do a find element. Let's use the same component. And let's do get text. So we don't want this. Okay, so we got this email ID. Let's go and check if that is correct. Okay, the first user's email ID is this. Cool. So now what let's do is let's try to filter out these users. So rather than getting all the users, I'm just interested in the admin users alone. So if you uh, check the DOM, so admin users will be denoted by this uh, badge icon. And if you check the uh, user properties here in the user card, so it has a user and we have a value called admin as true. So let's filter only the admin users. So here we have all users. Now let's go on the users. We'll say driver dot find elements dot component. And the component name is user card. But I was only interested in the user card with a property called admin proof. So just add a property called props and the property is going to be user and under the user, I'm just only interested in uh, a key called admin and the value should be true. So now let's print out all user size and what is the count of admin users? Okay, so I'm going to wrap it with JSON. So since user itself is a JSON property or to that particular uh, component, so the property should also be in a JSON format. So okay, so Okay, okay, so keep the syntax here. Well, I guess we should pass it this way then. So I have a property called user. Yeah, this should be the proper syntax. Yeah. So if you see here, so we have like our 10 users, 
out of it, we are having three admin users. So same way, you could just filter out the users with a, a country India, or you could specific uh, gender and so let's do a gender and uh, do a move. Okay, we should again do a string here. So we are still working on like improvising the way how we will passing all these filters. So currently we just made keep it as a very plain simple string, but these things will be improvised where like you could pass in as a JSON object directly or a, a map with key value pass. So those things will be improved in future versions. So now what you can see is like we have 10 users out of it, we have four main users. So you could like apply any values here, right? Based on the properties available, you can just filter it out based on it. So this is the first thing. The next is, so we want to validate whether this admin batch is displayed for admin users or not. How we could do that? So let's inspect it. So from the DOM, no, no okay, unique information that is there to check whether this is present or not. So let's again make use of the, uh, let's go here. Let's go here. So just a plain SVG element. Let's go to the component. Okay, now I can see there is a, okay, I call admin, okay. So there is a component called uh, admin batch. So that simply tells it whether this admin batch is available or not, right? So let's take this component name. So I have all the admin users, right? So we could do admin users dot stream for each admin. What I need to do? Admin dot find element by dot by react dot component. The component should be admin batch. It is displayed or not? It's too simple. Okay, so cannot locate an admin batch. Okay, so we have changed it to mail, right? So we should change it back to admin. So we have searched for mail. So there are like few uh, mails who are not admin, right? So for those things, like we will get element not found exception. So for uh, admin users, it should be true. So it's a we don't want this. Cool. So we have two for all the admin users. This is very simple, right? So, and also the chances of these component names changing is very minimal, you know? So no one just goes and say, hey, I don't want this to be a user card. I want to change it to user fancy card. That, that's not gonna happen. Even if that's gonna happen, so we have a support for uh, wildcard uh, finding, you know? So rather than giving the component name entirely, you can just search with some wildcard characters like this. Let's also see example of that. So let me first pull up the source code. Okay, so here it is the component name called user card. So what I'm going to change it is like, I will change it to new user card. Now if I refresh, and go to the UI this is the page. So now if you check the name of the component has changed to new user card. So for this scenarios, what you could simply do is just add a star in front of it. So it matches a user card and it, it just ignores what are the previous value test. So let's do it for the same. And that's it, no any additional changes required.
Cool. Same result with very minimal change, right? So this is uh, as far of uh, identifying the elements. It also has another capability. What the capability is? I I don't want to use this by React component, so I will just use a normal uh, locators that is being provided with Selenium. It's okay. But what I am interested is I want to get the properties and state of the uh, element some way. So let's say I have a user. I want to find the ID of this user, but the ID is not displayed in the UI. Or what else? Is there any ID information that is not in the UI, but it is there in the properties or state? I want to extract it. So for example, whenever we click on any of the user, it has an internal state called selected. Okay. So if we go here, let's select someone. We can inspect here. So we have a user card. And if you go to the state, there is a state called selected. I want to check whether element is selected or not. Or I want to get the ID of this user, what country this user belongs to. See, in case of website, it is not displayed in the UI. But I am interested in finding what the user's website is. So that is where this React Web Driver comes with another functionality. Where, so first I have created an instance of this React Web Driver, just passing in the driver object. And now what I can do is, so I will find uh, all the users. And for all users, I will just like look through it. And I will try to get the properties of this user. How am I going to get? I will do this dot React Web Driver. And I want to get a React component for the found web element. I will just pass in the web element. And I would say, get its property. See, it will just pull in all those information, whether the user is admin, country, email, gender, everything. What if I don't want all this information? I just interested in getting the uh, maybe website. I could just pass in here saying, hey, I just want the props user dot website. Cool. It just returns the all the website for me. So this is for property. But what if I want to get the state? So let's do uh, all users dot get of zero dot click. So 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 that the first and second users state will become selected to true. Now instead of getting the prop, let's try to get the state. So just click on the first two element. Okay. So still it is shown false. Okay. Let's try to do this. Select it. Okay, not sure. Something uh, I made yesterday broke it. So basically, like how you got the props, right? The same way you could also able to get the state from these elements. So this this user is a generic web element. You know, this is not something which we found using a, a, a real component. You can also use any locator here. So you could say, hey, if I find all the uh, locators by CSS, and you could pass the same element to this information through this component. And it will return all the state and properties of this. So, yeah, so this is pretty much which I wanted to uh, showcase it to the community. And uh, I hope like you all can start using it. And uh, I agree, like still there are like few improvements that needs to be done, but we are actively working on it and we will be publishing uh, new versions. And uh, 
new uh, bindings for other uh, programming languages as well. So just start using it. And in case if you face any issues, like uh, just feel free to create a new one in the GitHub and we will be uh, fixing it uh, as soon as uh, possible. So yeah, that being said, like uh, I just opened the details for the any questions and uh, answer that needs from my end. Okay, the first question is from uh, Anand. Like, uh, will this work for a React-based application mobiles as well? So, like, uh, so I haven't like explored uh, in uh, those friends. Like, uh, we just like uh, tested it with the uh, basic React apps and it works well. We will also try to evaluate that and like we will like uh, keep you posted on that. Okay. So yeah, the same similar question. Like, uh, can we use this with the APM as well? So if you are if you want to test it uh, uh, the web-based application in web use, then this will definitely work. So yeah, this works for our APM web view based applications. Uh, will this work with React elements inside a shadow DOM? Okay, so this has nothing to do anything with the shadow DOM. So like uh, in case if you're going to use uh, Selenium, like you need to switch the context and then if you start locating it, it should work. So shadow DOM is something similar to how the iframe works, right? So it has nothing specific to do with the shadow DOMs here. Okay, that's all the questions we have. So thanks, Darshan, for joining and sharing with your experience with us today. Okay, thanks a lot, Vigresh, for uh, being a great host.